And so next is time to actually start that learning process. The fun part, you know, and the rough part at times, but still the fun part is, is the climb. Hello everybody, my name is Nyan. I'm the Black Female Engineer that provides content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today we are talking about how to become a software engineer in 2022. The fastest way, the fastest way. So yeah, let's just hop on right to it. So if you're trying to become a software engineer, first and foremost, when we're talking about how to become one, first take a step back and think about what are the things that when you were a kid you always wanted to become what are the things that currently you fantasize about doing and yes you might say like software engineering but truly take out that piece of it and like what kinds of things or type of work excites you and so here's an example as a kid i really wanted to be a fashion designer and looking at me now i still really love the different aspects that designing and fashion has to do with creativity and that you know freedom and that kind of fun with things as a kid you may have wanted to be an fbi agent and that whole thing of protecting your community and being a part of i don't know even know like this this network of uh, is the word secrecy but <laughs> this network of of intelligent people trying to keep the community safe a lot of people don't realize software engineering is just so broad it's such a large huge blanket term and if you want to become one be in this you know nice little group it's important to take a beat and try to niche down because yeah software engineer is this great broad term but okay are you a front-end developer are you a back-end developer are you a game developer do you work with x and x language there's so much inner workings that if you come at it without a clear focus it can make your route towards software engineering so so long because you're just out here learning things willy-nilly not really connecting it to a specific path because it is those paths that's going to lead you to the specific languages to learn another thing that people don't realize or at least i didn't realize when i was learning not all languages do the exact same things depending on what you want to do and what career what type of sector you want to be in different languages are better for that you can't just say oh i'm gonna learn python because everyone says to learn python you know you want to be let's say like a front-end developer then learning python isn't that necessary so yes start with the path so going back to those examples if you used to fantasize about being an fbi agent or you currently fantasize about doing something like that then cybersecurity might be the route for you me i wanted to be a fashion designer and so looking at it now front-end development was the right path for me to start learning how to code and so take a second like truly just pause the video and think okay where does my mind go when i'm escaping when i'm trying to go to bed when i'm fantasizing or when i was a kid where where did my mind go when i was asked what do you want to be when you grow up because i can assure you whatever that dream is there is a field in software engineering that can closely relate to it which will make learning those types of languages those languages that relate to that field a lot more fun and exciting we'll provide you with a few languages that have been noted to be super high in demand in 2022 and that is python surprise surprise python java javascript those are two different languages y'all c sharp php and kotlin and so those six languages have been noted to be some of the most popular and most in demand for 2022 and so think about okay i really want to be in web development or i really want to create apps some of the languages to definitely learn now if that's the case would be javascript and it fits in with what you want to do in a career in the field and it fits in with the most in demand languages if for 2022 because we want to learn languages and everything but we also want to get a job at the end of it i mean i'm presuming you want to get a job afterwards and so yes make sure that the language you're learning the languages you're learning fill those two buckets what you actually want to do in tech and that high in demand aspect 
If you would like me to dive more into specific languages that will be super beneficial for 2022 and super high in demand, the types of languages that jobs are hiring for, let me know in the comments below because it helps me know what you like and what you want. So please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so next you have the specific type of work you want to do as a software engineer and you have the language or languages you are going to start off learning. I suggest starting with one or two, dabble in one or two, until you figure out okay I'm going to stick with this one for now and then move to this one so you kind of sometimes it's best to juggle two and see like okay actually I I like this one more and just really go on that direction and so start with no more than two but then definitely do niche down to one and so next it's time to actually start that learning process the fun part you know and the rough part at times, but still the fun part is, is the climb. And so I highly recommend starting out, starting out, starting out with Harvard CS 50 course on EDX. It was super low cost. And I started out with this course because it provides just such a good baseline for computer science. This video is for people not actually going towards the computer science route in terms of a degree. However, there's still certain things you should know that you may not know if you only go to tutorials on Udemy. There's still certain terminology to know, certain concepts to know that you really won't get without being in a quote unquote like college classroom, like the principles of things. And so it's important to take a second to get to know those things. If you want, you can do this maybe after you've dabbled in coding a little bit so you can get that and some feeling of getting your hands dirty. I know I like to do that. I don't like to just sit and listen to something and wait for actually getting to code i like coding right away and so if you want you can do this at the same time as you doing other coding tutorials but i highly recommend a course like that that does teach the principles of computer science that class does have other classes to continue on to learning more about computer science however i think it's not super necessary if you go through that one course and i'll link it down below i think it provides a fantastic baseline for things to know okay so you've done that course and so now let's now go to courses for actually getting your hands dirty and development this is where udemy can be great the thing with udemy is you can kind of it can be great and not so great because on the not so great part it can kind of be this i don't even know tutorial loop of you're following along with what the teacher is saying and doing but you're not actually understanding the reason behind things and why you're doing those things but you're following along and so at the end of the day you have this amazing to-do list app but you if you need to do it again you couldn't do it or if you had to explain what functions you use and why you use those functions and x y and z how you got to that end product you couldn't really explain it which is not a good thing however there are two specific instructors i've heard nothing but amazing things about and that is cold steels he has his web development boot camp on udemy along with a bunch of other tutorials and courses on udemy and what's great about theirs is they've released courses for 2022 so you know you're getting the most updated concepts and functionalities and skills being provided to you via this course. And Andre Niyogi, who has Udemy courses for Python and web development. I'll add links to those below as well, but I highly recommend going through those courses, but also make sure, again, you're not just following along to these things and you are truly making sure you are comprehending the whys behind things. Because if you don't know the why, at the end of the day, when you get hired, and it's time for you to solve certain problems, you're not gonna know how to solve them because you never understood the whys from before. And so if you don't understand the whys from before, you're not gonna know which things to implement now for these current problems. And so make sure you're understanding the whys. What's amazing is we have this whole world at our fingertips. And so really, you should be able to Google some, some, some and figure it out, especially because it's a little secret in software engineering on the job, Google is you, your coworker. That I, I speak more to Google than I do any other person at my job. So being comfortable with that process and asking questions to on Google and on Stack Overflow and whatnot is extremely important. And it is truly, truly, truly a skill in and of itself. And from there, start 
building. Don't think that because you don't know the exact steps to do something that you're not ready to start building it. Again, in software engineering, on the job, you are Googling constantly. And so start building. Think of an app you want to build. I'll say a to-do app again as an example. Say, okay, I want to build a to-do app. Start with a static web page of, okay, so here's the header, here is the design I want, and here is a rectangle where I want the to-dos listed. Then Google, okay, how do I dynamically add to-do list items? And then how do I remove to-do list items? And how can users click on this component to create this reaction of, okay, if I click close, then the to-do list item disappears. And Google those things step by step. And slowly you'll see how drilling down to specific questions really can make the development process easier where you can't just say how to build a to-do app but you think about the steps that it would take get a whiteboard and think about truly what steps it would take to create a to-do list on a conceptual level and then start cranking those things down one by one by one and that yeah i'm gonna keep saying this that is what you will do on the job there's a myth that Software engineers, they just know how to do things. Like, no, they don't just know how to do things. They know how to find the answers. They know how to find the answers and problem solve. And that is what really, when it comes down to it, what software engineering is. Also understand that you're learning. It's not a linear path. You don't say, okay, I'm going to be an expert at CSS first before moving on to JavaScript. I'm actually using an example from one of my commenters, commenters, commentators. One of the people that wrote me a comment, I am um, actually using them as an example because they asked me this question like, okay, when can I move on to JavaScript? I've been doing CSS for this long. When can I move on? Don't have the mindset of, I must be an expert at this before moving on. It's going to be so iterative. Once you build your first one to two static sites with CSS, it's okay to now move on to the next concept like JavaScript. However, when you're going through JavaScript and you start playing around some more and building some more, then you may have to come back to CSS to have a specific type of view you want. And then you may have to go back to maybe HTML to be able to build tables. And then to be able to populate those tables dynamically, you may need to then jump back to JavaScript and so don't think that it's this structured linear path like some studies are because some studies are like that like being a doctor you need to know certain steps before you're out here sawing people open you can't just iterate through that but yes make sure that you understand that you will be iterating through this and you're not going to be doing things in a linear path because that's not how this is gonna go at all ever even at work that's not how it's gonna go and then finally think about your timeline this is a video about yes how to become a software engineer in the fastest way possible in 2022 however it's not gonna go fast if you don't have like goal you know what i mean a actual timed out goal of okay in six months i want to sign my offer for a job or in one year i want to do x y and z if you don't have that plan it won't flow in such a structured manner because you're not holding yourself to any type of timeline i it took me about exactly six months from me going from one career to signing on a job for in software engineering it took just about exactly six months total that entire path that entire journey and so six months is totally doable four months is totally doable three months a year five years it's more about make sure you're putting that time and effort in now make sure you have that goal now and you understand that goal so that everything you're doing to get there is following the timeline you want. So there you go, everybody, a very high level overview of the steps to take to become a software engineer in 2022. Over the next few weeks and months, I will start drilling down more and more into these concepts. Like I said, it would be a three hour video if I went through all of it now. And so I'll make it more of a series. I have a similar series for 2021. And so check out those videos. But yes, I want to do some more things more relating to 2022 and the languages in demand and learning concepts in demand and things like that. So yeah, please let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what your questions are, your goals are, and I will see you all soon. Thanks y'all. Bye.